This generally tasteless, odorless liquid, otherwise known as water, doesn't seem like a very complicated part of the espresso process, but actually it is. Not only for the maintenance of your machine, but also for the overall flavor of your shot. Too many minerals in the mix and your brew will likely come out off balance and bitter. Not enough minerals and your extraction will suffer because there's really nothing for those coffee solubles to grab onto as they pass through the coffee bed, leading to a flat boring cup. So much like Little Red Riding Hood, we're looking for that bowl that's just right. To do that, I'm going to be comparing three different popular water types for making espresso. Filtered spring water, third wave water's espresso profile, and perfect coffee water. But on top of that, I'll be taking this even a step further by brewing each water profile with three very different and distinct coffee profiles. A dark roast, a blend, and a lighter fruit forward single origin. All to find out how each water affects the coffee in the cup. But before we get into all of that, a quick word from this video's sponsor, Stand Art Magazine. If you're into coffee, its culture, and learning about the world around it, Stand Art Magazine is the perfect addition to your brew bar. With quarterly releases, they shed light on issues both inside and outside of the cafe, highlighting people who elevate the industry and deep dives into technical ideas like brewing and mechanics. To sweeten the deal, each new issue also comes with a sample of coffee from some of the world's best roasters to give you the full sensory experience. You can't beat the combination of fresh coffee and fresh print. Head over to standartmag.com slash Prometheus or hit the standart link in the description to snag your own year subscription shipped direct to your door nearly anywhere in the world. So before we get into all the tasting and testing data, I wanna talk about the parameters I use to test all these waters. Each shot is a 17 gram dose with a 36 gram yield, pulled between 22 and 25 seconds. The brew temp was set to 202 degrees Fahrenheit throughout all of the tests. All of these parameters were kept constant to properly gauge how each water changes or benefits the extraction. When switching between water profiles, the tank was fully removed, emptied, rinsed with distilled water, and refilled. Then the brew boiler was purged for two minutes to ensure only the intended water was used to brew the coffee tested. So after three days, nearly three pounds of coffee and nearly three gallons of water, I decided to take all this data and put it together into a way that's kind of easy to understand or easy to absorb, and I thought the best way would be a chart. So on top we've got the water types, and on the left, the coffee with each corresponding taste description and the average extraction yield per the five shots tested. So starting with the dark roast, let's go through these results. Brewing the dark roast with the filtered water produced a cup with a bitter dark chocolate base, low acidity, and a slight citrus hint. Its mouthfeel was smooth and creamy with a bitter but not unpleasant lingering finish. The third wave water resulted in a cup that was surprisingly bitter at the start, but quickly dissipated to a smooth, buttery dark chocolate with a long dark chocolate finish. The perfect coffee water produced a well-balanced but slightly bitter cup with a mild acidity. Notes of dried cherry and dark chocolate led to a creamy mouthfeel and again a lingering pleasant bitterness. On the medium roasted blend, the filtered water created a sweet and well-balanced cup with notes of milk chocolate, caramel, and lingering orange peel on the finish. The acidity was mild with a smooth and creamy mouthfeel. Again, the third wave water was surprisingly bitter, but had a slower fade to a dark chocolate base. It lacked balance overall with the bitterness overtaking my palate, resulting in some astringency or a drying sensation. The perfect coffee water produced a cup with a balanced milk chocolate base and a slight hint of citrus, but generally mild in flavor and acidity with a velvety mouthfeel. On the light roasted Ethiopian, the filter water brewed a sweet lemon and floral shot with a mild acidity and tartness. It was juicy with a thin mouthfeel. Third wave water produced a very bright and intensely acidic pull. There is some lemony sweetness, but also some bitterness as the acidity fades. Once again, the body is thin, followed by a slightly sour lingering aftertaste. Perfect coffee water followed up with an intensely sweet shot and a mild acidity. The lemon and floral notes were reminiscent of Fruit Loops. The texture overall is thin, but the shot is juicy and lingers with a lemon aftertaste. Okay, so there's a lot going on there, so let's break things down a bit. 
Even though the filtered water proved a little better for extraction, based on tasting each of these coffees on three different water profiles, I have to say overall the winner for me was perfect coffee water. Considering my personal preferences for those lighter roasted fruit forward coffees, I really like the way it elevated the sweetness while also sort of tamping down the acidity, allowing those nuanced flavors to shine. It was also really nicely balanced out with those dark and blended coffees, which I think is good for not only straight espresso, but also for my morning flat white. I also noted that Perfect Coffee Water's packet dissolved almost immediately, but Third Waves was a bit more stubborn, even after a lot of shaking, leaving some small but visible grains at the bottom of the container. And speaking of the bottom, that's where Third Wave Water landed for me in these tests. Something about the overall mineral blend seems to really elevate the intensity for things like bitterness and acidity for me, which are things I like but seemed out of balance. Neither Third Wave Water or Perfect Coffee Water give their percentages or ratios, but they do share two out of three ingredients. Both have magnesium and calcium, but Third Wave has potassium and Perfect Coffee Water has sodium. So maybe it's the potassium, the lack of sodium, or all of the above that caused the coffee extractions on Third Wave Water to just not hit for me. Crystal Geyser, on the other hand, naturally carries all of these minerals and lands at a very close second to Perfect Coffee Water. Of course, it kind of goes without saying, but this is a subjective test. Anything that's taste-based will be. And if you're weighing coffee water options, I definitely recommend getting a couple side by side because it's not only educational, but also I found it pretty surprising. I came into this expecting the coffee produced would be a lot closer in terms of flavor, and I would just be splitting hairs, but instead found some significant differences. Considering if you tasted each of these waters separately, you'd be hard pressed to find any differences at all. This is what makes the process of tasting coffees brewed with different waters all the more interesting. I've been told before about how different minerals can affect how and what's extracted, but this was my very first time actually experiencing those differences firsthand. And yes, before you ask, moving forward I will be switching to using perfect coffee water. Even though the difference between them and the Crystal Geyser was slim, I did love the effect it had on the lighter roast. And lastly, I want to extend a thank you to Third Wave Water and Perfect Coffee Water for providing their products for this test and this video. And with all that said, I think it's time I wrap this one up and pass the conversation on to you. Do you use any of these water options? Any positive or negative feedback or experiences you'd like to share? Drop your answers to those and any other questions you may have in the comment section down below, and I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spermetheus for content throughout the week, my blog at Spermetheus.com, my coffee at littlegiant.coffee, and if you want to help support the channel and help me make more and better videos, consider becoming a Patreon member at the Patreon link in the description. And as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.